This is what I'm excited to show you, um, the planning tool we've created for basically our whole build planning process. So about a week ago, I was finding it really difficult to stay on top of everything. Um, I was trying to keep everything in my head and we had so many different tasks, some sort of like in progress, others that were still to do. And then um, we weren't really keeping track of everything and everything had to be done within a certain time frame. And I think different people are better than others at managing this. Like I'm definitely probably on the lower end of being okay at managing it in terms of how many things can you keep in your head at once while still maintaining and like being on top of everything. I find for me, I have to have a list. If I don't have a list and it gets to too many things I've got to like keep track of, it's not going to work. The good thing is, one thing I really like about this and I, and I wanted the list to be this way, is when you complete a task, it goes to the bottom of the list and it comes up as green completed because I think there's something psychological um, and good about seeing the tasks that you've actually completed, especially when you feel like you've got a lot on your plate because sometimes it feels like you're just treading water you feel like you're not making any progress at all. And for me, it really helps to go back and see this whole list of completed tasks because even though you might have a mountain of other tasks in front of you, you can see you have been making progress. So you can see, okay, I did all those tasks on that day. Wow, it didn't feel like it, but I was getting stuff done. So I wanna share this list with you because it's been super helpful to me. I'm gonna show you it now. The other thing I've built into the same spreadsheet is a Gantt chart. So. Basically, a Gantt chart shows you when each task has to be done, but it's got dates along the top and tasks along the side. So I've created a three month or three to four month one, I should say, um, that shows me, okay, over the next three to four months, what tasks do I have coming up for the build? When are they happening? And I've sorted them so that the sort of the tasks starting soonest are at the top and the tasks furthest away are at the bottom. When I sat down and started creating this Gantt chart, I started to realize there were things that I shouldn't be doing now or should have been doing yesterday that you know I'm doing now um, because otherwise they just won't be ready. So, you know, we can make sure, you know, we were talking about ordering tiles before we can make sure we've ordered the tiles on time. They're going to be delivered on time for when that has to happen on the house. So if you can use a tool like this, I think it'd be really helpful. So this particular spreadsheet, you know, it is basic because it's just a spreadsheet. Like there are a lot more um, complicated but also useful tools out there. Normally you have to pay a subscription for them because they're like a project management tool, but this is like, it will be from me, so it'll be for free and you can download it. You'll have to click enable macros because that allows the code to run in the background. But the cool thing is you can use this and you'll have the, the daily building tasks planner, which can be like your day to day. You know, if, as soon as you have something come up, put it into the task list. Um, and as you go through things, tick them off. That way nothing's in your head. You can leave your headspace for actually planning the build. So I would use this as a daily task planner and then use the Gantt chart at the end um, as your tool for looking sort of more to the future. Okay, what's coming up? And what you can do is obviously this is all tailored to my build at the moment, but what you can do is I've put the average time frames uh, for different activities relating to the build, whether that be like, okay, um, ordering windows and doors, what's the average lead time from main suppliers or how long does it take to put a kitchen in DIY? I've Googled a lot of this stuff. So what you can do is download this for your build, clear the task list and start putting your own task lists in. Maybe I'll include an example one so that you can see how it works, but you can just put all your own tasks in, start using that. Um, it'll feel really good, I promise you, once you start completing tasks and you see how much you do. And it'll be cool, I think, to look back on after you've done the build and be like, wow, I literally had to do all of this. Um, yeah, I think it'll be a feel good moment. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you real quick, for those of you that wanna download and use the build planner, how you can do it. So you need to go to the website, download the file, it's called build planner-sharing. When you open it, I'm just gonna show you here, you have to double click then you'll get a prompt to whether or not you want to enable macros. So you'll have to click enable macros because that allows the coding to run. Um, and so the code is built in so you can click a button and refresh your task list. So you definitely need that enabled. So I'm gonna click enable and this is what it's going to look like. So I've left a few tasks in here um, and made some up so that you can get an idea of how it works. So let's just have a quick look at this. So I'm gonna leave these tasks here but you've got a task section, so a description of the task, who's responsible for that task, 
the due date, so like the date you want this task completed by, and the status of the task. So is it to do, is it in progress, or is it completed? So if, if you've kind of started following up on that task but you haven't yet completed it, you can change it to in progress, etc. So you can see this is the button I was talking about, sort tasks by due date. So let's say um, you've booked the auger and excavator for the peers already. That's been done. So you can just change that to completed. Once you've done that, you can click the button and it moves that to the bottom of the list. So that's now out of the way. If for whatever reason you need to, um, you know, you're waiting for the guy to call you back or something to confirm the appointment, you could change it to in progress. And that would then sit in between the to-do list items and the completed items. So if I randomly complete one of these ones, you'll see it goes to the bottom. So you always have your to-do list items at the top, your in-progress items in the middle and the completed items at the bottom. If you add a new task in here, like uh, let's make one up, um, uh, get a quote from the plumber. You want that done, uh, say in between some of these dates, let's say the 19th to the 10th, oops, 19th to the 10th, 25. You can assign that to whoever you want. Let's assign that to Barry. I don't know who Barry is. Uh, that will be to do. And you'll see now that's gone to there. So it's it's always going to sort the dates by what is most important, You know what's the closest thing coming up. So it's just a really good way to manage all of the tasks you've got going on. Um, and as I said, as you go through and complete tasks, it's really nice just to be able to see them all line up at the bottom and you can feel like you're actually really getting getting traction and getting somewhere. So I find this really helpful for me. So feel free to use this all you want. Um, and if you do things like, for example, if you want to delete an item out, it's not going to destroy the list. So that's, that's really good. Um, now, the other thing I've got here is the build plan and schedule. So this is based on our build. So obviously it will be specific to us. I've put in all the tasks, I think, like the big tasks for the build that I could think of, the estimated start date, the estimated end date, um, and everything like that. So these are the only dates you'll need to enter um, if you want to change this for your build. Um, you can also add different items here if you think of other things uh, that are relevant to your build. Um, but all of this information will update into this chart here. It's called a Gantt chart. And this enables you to see every single item that you have to do during your build along with the dates at the top. So, you know, you can go to today's date. We're currently the 15th of, 15th of October and where there's a blue bar, it means that's currently in progress or starting. So ordered kit home for manufacture. So yes, our, our kit home is currently under manufacture. Um, here it is, sorry, and everything like that. And to the left, we had earthworks and tree removal. You know, that's already been completed. So you can see under under the 15th, 16th, um, that's already been done. So it's just a really good way if you're being able to see what's coming up. I haven't included the planning stages. So planning took us over three months. Um, it's probably, you know, you can expect your planning. In, and when I say planning, I mean getting certified. So from when you start talking to the certifier to when they certify your build, I think probably aim for three to six months. If you're really organized, three is probably right. Um, but if you're anything like us, it's probably going to be between three and six. And I've just put to help you here as well. I've done a little bit of research. I don't know these, um, these time frames from experience. So this has just been what I've been able to find online. Um, but it just gives you an idea of the time required in terms of averages for each item. So, you know, if you're thinking about, uh, you know, getting a kit home manufactured, based on how long most of them take once you put them into manufacture, I sort of factor in 60 to 90 days. So this can just be really helpful if you are if you want to update your own Gantt chart to have this. Um, and obviously your, your start and end dates won't be the same. You can refer back to these average lead times when putting your items in. I mean, if we as owner builders can, you know, be well enough planned to, to foresee what's coming next, um, I think that would be a huge advantage because we're not experienced in this like, like normal uh, professional builders are when, you know, they know when to get each trade in. They know when, or, or, or you know, they know how long uh, a plumber might take, for example, to, 
to be available. Like you might realize if you're not planning properly, oh, I need all my, um, all my pipes run while the electrician's here and has the trenches open. But then if you tell the plumber on the day, can you come here today to, to lay all my pipes? I bet you they will say no. Like they'll say two to three weeks. Sorry, I'm, I'm fully, fully booked. Um, and that's the risky run. But if you're well planned, that won't necessarily happen. Um, so that's the hope here. And then I've also got another tab here. I've just broken down like one of the big key tasks I have coming up next, which is drilling my pier holes, getting them inspected and concreting them. So doing all, basically the foundations. Um, I just wanted to have a bit of a gear list so that I definitely don't forget anything um, and have everything prepared. So this is uh, for free for you on the website. I hope that it's helpful. Um, let me know that if it is, let me know if there's other tools that you use or that you think could be helpful to other people doing an owner build. Um, but yeah, this has been super helpful for me. The main thing that's been helpful for me is this task list. I promise you, if you're not currently using anything for planning, this task list will clear up so much of your headspace. But yeah, let me know what you think of this task list. If, if you find it helpful, that feedback will be very encouraging for us. Um, if this doesn't work for you at all, or if you prefer different sort of tools, or if you know of another tool as well um, that's helpful, or you think could be helpful to owner builders, please share it in the comments below. Um, I'm not really precious about uh, this tool that I've created. To be honest, it was mostly ChatGPT. So shout out to chat. Um, but yeah, if it's helpful to you or some of you, that's the aim. Um, but yeah, happy for you to share any other tools uh, that you think would be useful. Um, but yeah, being planned is important. 100%. Um, otherwise, you'll end up overwhelmed.